Hi everybody, my name is Victoria. Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, hello. I'm glad you're here. I thought I would pop in today to tell you my July reading plans. There are, I think, three read-alongs that I'm attempting to participate in, so we will see how that goes. First off, we are, of course, continuing with The Way of Kings, and we are about halfway through at this point, and so now we are on to the second half, so we will be finishing this. If you don't know about the Stormlight Archives read-along, I'm a co-host for it. And then Christy Lewis from her channel, Dostoevsky in Space, is the main host. There's a Facebook group. There's lots of discourse happening. There's also live streams every two weeks. We have one coming up this week, July 2nd. And so I will link all the info down below for you in case you are new to that and you want to jump in. I'm having a great time with this whole experience and I'm having a great time reading this book. It's fascinating. It's well written. It's good fantasy. So definitely jump in if you want to read along with us. This next book honestly might be more in the maybe category of my TBR, but I want to try to squeeze in a Warbreaker because I hear that it has some tie-ins for Words of Radiance, which we will get to starting in August. So if I can maybe squeeze in a Warbreaker, I might maybe be able to catch some of those references. This is a book that I have really avoided reading the back of it or hearing any synopsis. All I have kind of heard is that there are colors, color, like a color magic system, but I'd rather go into this blind than have a synopsis because honestly every time I read a fantasy synopsis I really don't understand it anyways. <laughs> I never understand it until I actually start reading the book. So I'm gonna try to squeeze this in. I have actually written out like a weekly reading plan for myself for July so that I can squeeze this in. So we'll see if that happens. I hope it does. We're gonna do our best. And in case that wasn't enough Brandon Sanderson in my life, I'm also finishing up the Mistborn trilogy era one. Rainy and I are reading this from Rainy Day Reads and we've been buddy reading I believe the whole series together. So we are excited to finish this and see what happens to our beloved characters and this amazing world. Book two did such a good job of building the world and expanding it and also left off on a bit of a cliffhanger so I am just stoked to see how this all wraps up. You are probably very well aware that it's Jane Austen July. I've been seeing lots of people post their TBRs for it, and I'm also going to try to participate. And shamefully, I haven't actually physically read any Jane Austen before. I know, that sounds very strange, because how can you be a reader and avoid Jane Austen? In all fairness, I have listened to the audiobook for Pride and Prejudice, but I can't say I retained a lot because I was like driving and stuff while I was listening to it and I just tend to not retain audiobooks very well. Lucky for me though, one of the group reads for Jane Austen July is Pride and Prejudice. So I'm gonna get a second chance at it. Pride and Prejudice is one of those books that I already know the story so well because I've seen so many adaptations of Pride and Prejudice and I've watched the Lizzie Bennet Diaries and I've also watched, oh, Bride and, Bride and Prejudice? Yeah, that's another really good one. It's like a Bollywood retelling. It's a super fun movie. And of course, the Kiera Knightley version is really excellent too. That version also has like the most beautiful piano music all the way through, and I just love that film score. So it's a story I'm familiar with. I just haven't really read the source material properly, so I'm really excited about that. I believe that happens in the second half of July, and then the first half of July is going to be Emma, which is another one that I've loved the movie adaptation for. I've only seen the one with Gwyneth Paltrow. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. My copy is pretty chunky, so I'm slightly concerned about my ability to keep up with the group reads, but all we can do is try at this point. And then finally, I have three books that I'm sort of saving for The Reading Rush, which happens from July 20th to July 26th. I'll link that info down below as well, along with Jane Austen July too. But for that, I've saved a few options. So we have Rainbow Valley, which is the seventh book in Anne of Green Gables, the series. I can't believe we are at book seven and we are so close to the end. I think I'm gonna cry when it's over, but we are on Rainbow Valley. Looks like from the cover, her kids are growing up. They look a little more adolescent, preteen sort of situation. My favorite part of book six was the kids and their adventures. And so I'm looking forward to getting more of that. I do hope this seventh book 
takes a little bit of a different direction maybe with Anne. There are some things that happened with Anne in the sixth book that I wasn't a huge fan of and I'll talk about that whenever I film a wrap up with that book. But one of the challenges for the reading rush is to read a book that has your birthstone color on it and my birthstone is aquamarine and I think that's such a cool challenge but there is some aquamarine in there. Oh, sorry for the glare but um, the water I think I could consider aquamarine but depending on how things go I might actually get to this either before or after the reading rush is over but that's an option. The next book I feel just really sorry for because I keep pushing it back from month to month and I still haven't picked it up. I think it's maybe been on three different TBR videos so far and that is Siege and Storm by Lee Bardugo. I started this trilogy with Shadow and Bone um, a few months ago now, maybe in May, I can't remember, but haven't picked up the second book yet. I keep meaning to, but it's not a super high priority for me right now. It was a fun first book, but definitely didn't have me like itching to pick up the next book but I do want to. So this book falls in that like awkward middle ground where I'm sort of excited about it but not super compelled to pick it up. Maybe this will be the month. Maybe you'll see it on another TBR in the future. I hope not though. We're gonna try. It also is a good option for the aquamarine birthstone challenge for the reading rush. So that's option number two. And then the next book I'm super excited about and I'm definitely getting to because I'll be buddy reading it with Amanda from The Curly Reader and that is The Kingdom of Back by Marie Lu. I'm really excited about this book now because I've heard a few different people really hype it up and say that they loved it. But then weirdly on Goodreads it has a sort of low rating so I don't know what to think but I'm definitely gonna try it for myself. The premise of it sounds right up my alley. It's about Mozart's sister. A lot of you guys know I'm a musician too. I'm a classically trained flutist. I've played a lot of Mozart in my day. He has some Mozart flute concertos. I'm very familiar with Mozart, but not so familiar with his sister Nannerl, I think is her name. Nannerl was also a musician and a composer and a very accomplished one. For women back then, music was more a thing to make them a good catch and make them marriageable, and it wasn't necessarily considered a career path for them. And so this book explores her, from what I understand, there's also some magical realism going on in this book. I have some slight concerns with this book because sometimes music books are a little bit cheesy, especially if you know something about music. Sometimes they just don't come off very well. But Marie Lu is a very well-loved author in the YA genre. I'm also a little hesitant about this because it is YA and I've been burned by YA before. Not to say that there can't be really good YA books, but recently I haven't had very good luck with them. However, Elliot Brooks, who is a booktuber who I really admire and love and I really respect her opinions, she really liked this. So I feel like if Elliot liked it, maybe I'll like it too. I'm excited for this one though, and I'm excited to buddy read it with Amanda. And while this book is also going to be another contender for the challenge to read a book with aquamarine in the cover, it's also going to fulfill the challenge of reading a book with the word the in the title. Those are all the books that I'm planning on getting to in the month of July, or at least crossing my fingers that I will get to in July. Future Victoria editing here but I wanted to pop in because I forgot to mention another book, of course, and that is the short stories for Kate Howe's Most Victorian Read Along. I really want to get to the short stories by Elizabeth Gaskell. I didn't get to them in June at all, so we're going to be optimistic and say that we can get to them in July. I would love to know what you're reading in the month of July and if you are planning on participating in any of these read-alongs as well. I hope you have a great rest of your day. Keep reading great books and until next time. Bye-bye. It's fascinating. It's well, it's fascinating. And Christy Lewis, and Christy Lewis Dostia, and then Christy Lewis. This next book, I'm. This is a this is a book that I have, and in case that wasn't enough, Branders. Branderson? I almost said Branderson. And in case that wasn't enough Brandon and And of course the Kiera Knightley
and of course the Kiara, and of course the Kiara Knightley. And so I'm. I've also seen, but Nanerl, Nanerl was also a musician and a composer. Let me know. I'd love to know what you're reading in. I hope you can. I hope. I hope you have a great rest of your day. I hope you have a.